Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm gonna be covering a serial killer today that I actually read a lot about when I was a kid. And when I went back to cover this one for this channel, was quite shocked that some of the things that I learned about when I was a kid were incorrect. So let me go ahead and start off with trigger warning. This video is going to contain items of torture, heinous death and some cruel death uh, penalty type discussions. So let's get into it. Today I'm covering Elizabeth Bathleroy, also known as Countess Elizabeth Bathleroy, and in some accounts, the Vampire Countess. So, Elizabeth Bathleroy was born in Transylvania in 1560. She was born to a wealthy family that included kings, cardinals, and judges. Now, cruelty was a normal thing for Elizabeth in her early life. Now, that's something that needs to be understood. Like, she was raised in, like, the 1500s, and that was just part of everyday life. Um, an uncle taught her Satanism, and an aunt taught her sadomasochism as a young child. Um, Elizabeth also witnessed cruel events in her early years. 1514, there was a peasant rebellion. This is just giving you an example of something that happened that her siblings witnessed. And then we're gonna get into something that she actually witnessed. So a peasant rebellion um, happened in 1514. And Gregory Doza was the leader of that rebellion. Um, they rose up against the nobility. Nobility squashed that rebellion. So Doza was publicly tortured in various ways in front of everyone. One of the tortures was he was forced to sit in an iron throne that was lit with hot coals. And while he was sitting in this iron throne that was being heated by these coals, they crowned him with a red hot crown. Due to the Peasant Rebellion, 1517, the peasants were lowered to the level of serfs, which meant that they could only appeal for justice to the lords. They didn't go directly to the nobility anymore. Another example of something, this is something that Elizabeth directly witnessed, was a man was accused of selling his child to the Turks. So, they took this man and sewed him alive into the belly of a horse. The man was being sewed into the horse. Elizabeth was in the crowd. She actually giggled as the man's head poked out of the belly for one last time before they sewed that final stitch. For her time though, Elizabeth was quite extraordinary. She was a Renaissance woman. Um, she could read and write. She was educated in mathematics. She could speak and write Latin, German, and her native tongue, which was Hungarian. Um, she would write to other nobles requesting books to read, and some of her favorite topics were biology, botany, anatomy, religion, and the occult. Elizabeth was described as having a keen and inquisitive mind, but she was also known as a sadist to people that were close to her. Elizabeth married Fenric Nosdy at the age of 15. Fenric was known as the Black Hero or the Black Bay of Hungary due to his fighting efforts against the Turks in Hungary. Fenric was often away at war due to his military career. The couple rarely saw each other and often they only saw each other at Christmas, Easter, and some during the summer. This also hindered them from having children. It took the couple 10 years 
to conceive their first child, but eventually they had three who lived to adulthood. Elizabeth's intellect and strength helped her because she was left alone to rule the estate, often due to Fairnick's military career. All things considered, Elizabeth was a capable ruler who protected her people and concerned herself with their welfare. Now, considering how bad this story actually is, Elizabeth was very concerned with the people of the estate. Now, the way things were then was like, okay, so Fairnick and Elizabeth were the count and countess. Then you had like ladies and lords and then the serfs. So the serfs would go to the ladies and lords if things were bad enough, they would go to the count and countess. But if, like, people were trying to invore, uh, invade the st estate, the count and countess would get involved. And that happened one time, and the count was away at war, and Elizabeth told him, like, look, she wrote him a letter. You're, in my, you're invading my property. You're putting my, my people at risk. I'm going to give you to this day to get out. And if you don't, beware. And, like, the guy kind of laughed it off. But he got out rather quickly. Because once people started talking about how Elizabeth was, people started staring clear of that estate. <coughs> Elizabeth's lessons in cruelty did continue with her marriage to Fairnick. Fairnick would write to her about his battles and give her advice about cruel ways to discipline uncooperative servants. Fernick by no means was innocent. He would dance in the blood of his slain enemies on the battlefield, and he would also play catch or football with severed heads on the battlefield. So Fernick was no, like, innocent person, but, yeah. He was also kind of like a stabilizing force in Elizabeth's life. Like, he helped Elizabeth get her torture skills to, like, the peak of what they were. But he also restrained her from, like, murdering multiple people. Like, the number of murders before Fairnick died were quite fewer than after. Um, in 1602, a Lutheran minister... Istavan Magnier stayed, started questioning the number of young female servants that was coming back from the castle for burial. Serfs were brought to the castle with the promise of work and a better life, but most of the girls were never seen alive again. Elizabeth, also the countess, passed off the deaths as victims of cholera, but the number made the, made the clergy nervous. The clergy took the complaints to the authorities, but nothing was done because the girls were only serfs. If serfs wanted to complain, they would have to take the complaints to the count and countess themselves. So there was no point of doing so. 1604 marked a turning point for the countess. Fahrenheit died in battle. Rumors and the body counts increased drastically. Elizabeth had a number of secret chambers in her castle that only herself and her trusted inner circle of servants were allowed to enter. The purpose of these rooms were for Elizabeth to carry out her torture fantasies. Those tortures included. Now, here is a list. There were whippings, beatings with clubs, burnings, gougings of flesh, biting, burning with hot irons, sewing the lips together, scissor play, pouring water, pouring ice water over their heads and leaving them to freeze to death, covering with honey and being left for bugs to feast on exposed skin, cutting off hands, noses, and genitals, and slicing open the, the flesh between the fingers. The countess would even hold a court of sorts in her castle if she, say, so say, like, if she accused you of stealing, like, she would heat a coin to, like, red hot, and then she would press it into your flesh. Elizabeth would become carried away with her torture play and become frenzied. And once she became frenzied, you would die. Like, 
it was just that fast. One of the Countess's victims was forced to cook and eat her own flesh as a form of torture. So let's talk about the Countess's inner circle. Elizabeth did not have a tr did have a trusted inner circle of servants who knew of and participated in her activities in her secret rooms. The inner circle were also the recruiters of the serfs that were to be punished. So her inner circle would go out into the estate and get the serfs to bring them back to the castle. So Anna. Darvola, also known as Darvilia, was a servant of the Nardasi family for years, but became part of the Countess's inner circle in 1601. Darvilia also helped to hone the Countess's torture skills, and she later said the lady herself became crueler and crueler. Ilana Joel, the Countess's children's wet nurse. So, like, she would nurse the children after the countess gave birth to them. Dortas Vient is jo, uh, Ilya Joe's friend. Uh, Catilian Bisky is an elderly washerwoman. And then Janos, I can't even say his last name, but he went by Vixkyo, was also known as the kid. He was the only male member of the inner circle. <coughs> the women would supervise the young girls in the countess's employ, and Elizabeth started having issues with getting serfs to volunteer due to the high death count and the rumors surrounding the castle. 1609, Darvilia died of unknown causes. So it's uns we're unsure if Darvilia just died or if she became a victim of the Countess. 1610 was the beginning of the end for the Countess. Elizabeth opened what was called Gymnasium, a finishing school for young noble women, and this school was a way for Elizabeth to gain access to more victims. Um, it was a finishing school for noble women. So, nobles would send their young girls to this finishing school, not knowing that they were being tortured and being killed by the countess. Other noble women who were guilty of supplying women to Elizabeth, some were even accused of participating in the torture sessions. Elizabeth was now torturing and killing young noble girls, and this got the attention of the authorities. It was much different than the serfs. Serfs being killed and tortured, like they could turn blind eyes to this, but noble girls, that was a problem. That was like that line that you shouldn't cross, but you do anyway. That was the line. Uh, King Mathis had Grigor Thurzo begin an investigation into the situation. King Mathis had a reason for Countess to go down. Here's the problem. <clears throat> so, the war that was going on that the Count was fighting in was Hungary was trying to battle the Turks out of Hungary. Well, the Count was lending money to the King to fund the war. Well, once the Count got killed, Elizabeth kept going to the King going, hey, you know that money that my husband was lending to you? I'm going to need that back. The king didn't like that so much. So, if this was a way for him to knock the count off of her pedestal and get her to stop coming to him about the money that she owed, <coughs> that he owed her, that was one thing. But also, on top of that, if he could knock her off her pedestal and get her accused of a capital crime, he could also seize all of her property which would not only, one, erase his debt, but two, it would also give him all of his property and land that would put him in a better financial situation because there was a struggle between the Protestants and the Catholics, and it would put him in a newly... It would put him in a better position in this struggle so that he would be on the right side of that religious struggle. Thurzo started his investigation in the estate. 
He started by interviewing 52 witnesses. 34 of them were neighboring servants. He then moved to the countess's own servants. <coughs> the castle warden was a Benedict Besserdi, and he disclosed the fact that there were secret, secret chambers in the castle, but he did not know what happened inside them. Other servants spoke of hearing sounds of whips and cries of pain, but they had never said, seen anything. And then, even doctors were saying, we've been called to the estate. Four people at the estate. But all we were ever allowed to see were their faces. We could not, we cannot test what state their body was in. The countess knew that Thurzo was a problem and knew she needed to do something. So in August of 1610, an unexpected court was held where the countess appeared with her finishing schoolgirls in tow. A mother of one of the recently deceased finishing school girls testified to Thurzo that her daughter died of natural causes. This did nothing to help the Countess. Thurzo was not moved by this at all. So the Countess also had Thurzo come for tea. And she advised him that one of the other girls in the finishing school killed the other girls in the finishing school out of jealousy because she wanted their jewels. Again, this did nothing to help the Countess. So in September 1610, Elizabeth made a living will of sorts. Like, she sat down and just, like, gave away all of her stuff except for her wedding dress. Like, she willed out her castles to her kids. Uh, she gave them all of, like, the property and stuff. The only thing she kept was her wedding dress. <clears throat> and she did this so that if they did arrest her and convict her, they couldn't seize her property because it was no longer in her name. It was in the name of her kids. The only thing that she had in her name was her wedding dress. And by the time that she did this, her son-in-laws were already working with Thurzo because they wanted to head off the seizure of property. <clears throat> because they figured she was going to be convicted. So they were trying to head off the seizure of property to put them in a better financial situation as it was. So in October 1610, the Countess and her three daughters went to the spa. They returned to the castle. She packed up some of her stuff, and she was going to another castle. She was hoping to get to the other castle and let the weather set in so that the roads were impassable to get to her. She'd also been in contact with her cousin in Spain as kind of like a plan B. She was hoping that she could get her cousin in Spain to come pick her up and she would be like out of the country and they couldn't come and get her. But her cousin in Transylvania didn't get the communications, like they were getting kind of passed off as sorts. So on December 30th, 1610, Thurzo arrested the Countess in what he said caught in the act. However, the girl was severely injured, but she was still alive. On the scene, the girl stated that the Countess beat her, but Benzecti was the one that ripped her flesh. However, later, she changed her story to say that the Countess destroyed her right arm and hand. Thurzo awarded the girl money, wheat, and a small farm. The Countess was locked in a dungeon as 300 witnesses were gathered against her. The inner circle began blaming Darvilia, who, was, who had passed away in 1609, <clears throat> under torture. But as the pain increased, they turned and blamed the countess. They advised that before her husband's death, she rarely, <clears throat> sorry guys, she rarely killed, but that her killing increased once he died. They placed her body count somewhere between 30 to 50. Fix, Fico placed the bulk of the blame on the women in the inner circle and the, um, and the countess. Of the inner circle, he said, even I myself was afraid of them. 
The witnesses from the ser were servants and names given by the, her inner circle during torture. During testimony, the number of deaths were called into question. One illiterate servant girl put the number of deaths by the countess at 650. Benedict Desso, the countess, Clark, uh, the countess's court master, testified to witnessing the countess killing a clumsy servant girl named Ilonka in a frenzy fit that started from simple discipline. So, like I said, she would start out in like simple things, and then once she turned frenzied, it was all over with. Elania Joe testified that the Countess would beat girls until they bled. She testified that as soon as the blood splashed onto the Countess's clothes, the Countess would immediately change clothes and the Countess would order the servants to clean the blood from the, from the area. Elizabeth and the King wanted a trial, each for their own reason, but Thurzo refused. Elizabeth threatened Thurzo with her cousin, Gabor, Gabor Bathroy, that's her cousin from Transylvania that she was trying to get to come get her. To which Thurzo stated, You, Elizabeth, are like a wild animal. You do not deserve to breathe the air on earth or see the light of the Lord. You shall disappear from this world and shall never reappear in it again. Thurzo talked the king out of the trial by saying it would undermine the whole nobu nobility and thus the crown. The Bathroy Nasty family conceded the crown's debt to the family. The inner circle was tried and executed. Joe and Ceci had their fingers torn out before their bodies were burned. Fico was beheaded, and Benzeki was imprisoned due to her age. They figured she's going to die soon anyway. Just throw her in prison. A local forest witch was believed to be trying to kill Thurzo and the king, so she was burned by order of Thurzo. The nobles who were supplying girls to Elizabeth were never judged. Neither was Elizabeth's daughter, who was also believed to be torturing the young girls at the finishing school. <clears throat> Thurzo ordered Elizabeth to be bricked into a windowless room in one of her castles, there was a small slit left for passing items back and forth, and a guard was placed there full time. Elizabeth's daughter would visit her. Thurzo's wife visited, but only to steal Elizabeth's jewelry. Elizabeth Bathroy died August 14th, 1614. And that is the tale of Elizabeth Bathroy. Now, let me get to the point where I was talking about things that I learned reading this trial when I was growing up. When I was reading this growing up, I was always told that Elizabeth Bathroy would get the young virgin women from the estate and she would murder them and she would bathe in their blood as a way to keeping herself young and beautiful. Well, this was introduced almost a hundred years after Elizabeth Bathroy was mur was uh, bricked into her castle and died. A man traveling the area was asking about the trial, and they had turned Elizabeth Bathroy into the vampire countess. And so he heard these stories and just introduced them into a book, and that got passed down. It was another, like... 50 years after that that the transcripts from her original trial were found and that is how I got this information here was that they were going off of the actual transcripts of her trial not some fairy tale accounts of people talking about this vampire countess that murdered these women and bathed in her blood she actually never bathed in blood. There was no, like, collecting the blood and putting it in a bath or anything like that. But because somebody introduced this into a, into a book and made it out to be fact, a hundred years after she died, that got passed down for years upon years upon years upon years upon years, and people believed it to be true. And it was not. So, for... 
almost 20 years I read that and thought it was true and it was not. So I gathered this information off of three websites. Um, I got it off of history.com. Let me look back. I got it off of history.com. Give me one second. My phone will work with me. All that's interesting.com and historycollection.com. And all three of those together state the same thing. That no, she did not bathe in the blood of virgins. So that old story is all made up. But anyway, let me know what you think of this story. Give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Ring that bell so that you're always notified when I upload a video and look down in the description box down below you can find my Facebook Instagram Twitter and my email all linked down below let me know in the comment section what do you think about this Countess Elizabeth Bathroy and did you read those stories growing up that she had bathed in the blood of virgins to stay young and beautiful anyway guys I will see you on the next one that's all for now bye guys